Phoenix.com, and we do appreciate all our viewers also on Facebook Live. We're going to be talking Cardinals football with the with our one and only Richard Signs, and he's right there, Cardinal Stadium right now. Richard, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Football season is here. I mean, I can't be any better than that, right? Hey, it's finally <laughs> here. So tell me, what was it all about today? It must have been great to see some action finally. Yes, you know, today was the first practice. The fans got to come in. And last year, they only had the fans on, like, one side of the stadium. But this year, they were on both sides, and they were both really filled. And there were a lot of fans out here. They were cheering, I mean, for anything. Larry Fitzgerald runs out, and everybody's like, yay! And I'm like, he hasn't even done anything yet. <laughs> and then, of course, he had some good plays where fans did have a reason to cheer. David Johnson had a nice run. John Brown had a nice catch. Patrick Peterson knocking balls down. So, as you said, it was nice to see guys out there practicing and competing and it's just day one but hey man i'm excited just like the rest of the fans and what do you think uh especially for this first week coming up what, what are some things for if people want to come out and, and check them out what are some things to watch for uh particular players or or, or what should be should they be looking at yeah there's some certain keys to this team that will be key to their success one is the offensive line. You got new guys on that O-line. The top pick from last year, uh, DJ Humphreys, is going to be a starter this year, so all eyes on him. Also, watch the secondary. They got new guys in the secondary. They got new guys at cornerback. They lost two key players in Ger Gerard Powers and uh, Rashad Johnson, so they got some new guys there. They brought in Tavon Branch from the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, so keep your eye on the secondary. Keep your eye on the O-line and watch the battle at running back. David Johnson, the rookie from last year, was absolutely fantastic at the end of the year, but a lot of people forget before he became the starter, Chris Johnson, the veteran, was the starter, and he was leading the league in rushing. Then he gets hurt, and then David Johnson almost takes it to another level, so it's going to be a two-headed monster at running back this year for the Cardinals and also you know bring something like a football or whatever because after practice they always have a couple players out by the elevators that sign autographs and stuff and so it's pretty cool to see it's really fan friendly and it's just a lot of fun and it's also indoors you get out of the heat and you can watch some football so you can't beat that absolutely and do you think this season especially there's going to be a little added swagger just because hey they they've had their own show on Amazon now do you think it's going to have a little extra uh boost for them Oh, yeah, they've gone Hollywood, that's for sure, and they've also <laughs> gone big time. Patrick Peterson got to camp yesterday in a helicopter. He choppered in and landed, you know, at a field, on a field next to the stadium. I mean, that's how cool the Cardinals are. Yeah, they've got swagger, that's for sure. It all starts with their head coach. He wears the caps, he's got the cool shirt. I mean, he just has the swagger when he walks, and they know they're good. I mean, they were 13-3 and three last year. For them, it's Super Bowl or bust. They really think they can win it, and they have the talent to do it. They just got to bring it all together, bring in some of these new guys, some of these young guys, and most importantly, stay healthy. And if they do stay healthy, Mike, this team can win it all. I mean, this is a really good team, the best team, talent-wise, depth-wise, that I've seen in the 14 years of covering this franchise. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you figure last year, I mean, they were, they were right there. I mean, it, oh, it was so close. Uh, we, yeah, we, one really viewer close. wants to know um, how big of a role does Shipley play for this, uh, for this uh, camp, and, and can he secure AQ that center Shipley. job? Yeah, A.Q. Shipley, uh, the center. And we were talking about you know, that offensive line, and they've got some new guys there. But he's a veteran, he's solid, and Bruce Arians was already talking about him and saying, hey, this guy's great, I trust him. And it was almost like, is he already the starter? Are you just handing him the job? Because that's not Bruce Arians' style. He likes for guys to compete. He loves competition at position. Because Evan Bain is a, a rookie that they brought in who's been fantastic. He was a starter all four years at the University of Missouri. And they were saying he might come in and compete. So he goes, oh, no, Evan's still going to compete. But AQ is the guy. Shipley's the guy. He has the advantage just because of you know, his experience. And that's what you want, especially when you're protecting a guy like Carson Palmer. But it's, that's going to be a good battle. Very good question. And when you, when you look at the schedule for this year, Richard, do you think they could run the table in, in the like in the beginning of the season? You know, maybe maybe jump to a five and zero start, four and one start. Do you think yeah. that's possible? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's a very good observation. When you look at the schedule, they get the Patriots at home without Tom Brady. I mean, we'll take that yes. all day long. So they're going to start off really well, and and they they get. You know, a lot of games at home down the stretch at the end of the season, so they can also finish up strong. So that's going to be 
key is getting that early lead in the division, getting those wins early, kind of taking that pressure off, get that momentum going, and uh, look out. I mean, this team is going to be really good. 13-3 and three last year. I don't know how much better they can get than that. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Also, you got to see what the other teams in the division do. Win your division, win your home games, win a couple on the road, get home field, and then you're right there, just a couple wins to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. And um, what do you think is going to be maybe one of their maybe disadvantage, or not disadvantage, but a spot they're going to have to work on if they, if they really want to make it to that Super Bowl? What's one weak spot you think they need to really uh, get going here on uh, camp? Yeah, the one thing, like I was saying earlier, is that secondary. I really want to see a couple of those guys, you know, stake their claim to those starting spots. And another thing is health. You know, with every team, you got to stay healthy. And they were a different team when they lost the Honey Badger. That guy out there is a ball hawk. He's unbelievable. So I think staying healthy, getting Tyron Matthew back to the Honey Badger, and he sounds like he's close to coming back. He said, hey, I can do some drills right now if Coach wants me to. But, of course, they're going to bring him back slowly because they know what he can do, and they want to make sure he's 100% before he comes back. No setbacks. So getting Tyron Matthew healthy, keeping all the other key guys, like Carson Palmer, Larry Fitzgerald, you know, David Johnson healthy, that's key. And then also that defensive line. I think that defensive line has been upgraded with the top pick, Robert Kimdichie, who's already injured, but it just seems to be like a little sprain. He's in a boot right now, but they don't seem too concerned with him. If they can get pressure on the opposing team's quarterback, their offense is going to put points on the board. So if their defense can come through for some turnovers and just hold the other offense in check, they'll be good. Nice. And um, our one Facebook viewer, John Roth, he wants to know, when will the Honey Badger be back? Yeah, uh, like I said a minute ago, he's he's so close, and you can tell he's chomping at the bit. He's out there, and he's talking to guys, and he's hugging guys. And it was yesterday where he was like, "Hey, I can do some drills, you know, right now." Coach wanted me to, but uh, like I said, they're gonna they're gonna ease him back. He says two to three weeks. Bruce Arians was kind of vague when when talking about that, but I think he'll definitely be back for week one. But even when he does come back. He's not going to be the honey badger we saw in week 10 last year or, you know, in his prime last year. It's going to take a while to come back and get used to the pace of the game. You know, so just get him back healthy, get his conditioning back, and then hopefully once we get to a couple weeks in the regular season, we'll see the honey badger that we're used to seeing. And that's one thing he said is like, hey, I don't want to rush back and then not be the guy that everyone else is used to seeing, including myself. Absolutely. And we know that the fans are just so excited for football to be back. Mm -hmm. but. Tell me, what about what, what, what were the players like? What was their uh, uh, feelings today? You know, first day back. Yeah, you know what? I think they were just as excited as the fans. It was kind of funny, and that's one of the things Carson Palmer talked about today in the morning media session. He says, you know what? Guys aren't dreading camp. They're not saying, oh no, training camp is starting. These guys are excited about camp, and I saw a lot of smiles on the field today. I saw a lot of sweat. I saw a lot of competition. There was one play in particular where Patrick Peterson was man-to-man -man on Michael Floyd, and it looked like Floyd had beat him in the corner of the end zone. The ball was coming perfectly, but at the last second, Patrick Peterson bats it down, and Michael Floyd was mad. He was not happy, and he, like, punched this wall, you know, a padded wall, and I was like, oh, boy, don't hurt yourself. But you could tell he really wanted to make that catch and burn Patrick Peterson, and I was like, wow, this is day one at camp, and they're already so competitive, and I talked to him about that and we're going to hear more about him uh michael floyd coming up tonight at nine and ten o'clock on fox 10. nice and here's another question from miguel uh he says do you think the badger and jenkins will be alternating once the season starts well i think they might give jenkins a shot at the other corner position so i think uh, you know, Jenkins could come in when they go to nickel and dime and they have an extra DB in there because he's a veteran that they brought in from Tampa and they brought him in for a reason. And, you know, Steve Kime seems to do that every year. He, he brings in a veteran that's going to have a little bit chip on his shoulder and give him one of those show me contracts where, hey, show me what you can do and we'll give you some good money now. But if you show me that you still have some years left in you, we'll give you a bigger contract. And he's done it the last couple of years. He did it with Dwight Freeney. You know, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. But I think for a while you might see them alternating until the Honey Badger gets going. But you want Tyron Matthew on the field at all times. Absolutely. And uh, Richard, we thank you for your time out there and uh, look forward to your reports at Anytime. 9 and 10 as well. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I miss my protesters.